G'day, I'm Steve. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Hey, welcome to the workshop. What I want to do this video is share a very, very cost-effective, very simple and easy to do, but extremely useful little range of tools you can do to add embellishments to any work you're doing. Whether you're making a box or it's the back of a chair or around the corner of a table or anywhere you might have done some carving or you just want a bit of textural finish, I'll show you how to make some really, really unique little tools that then brands all your stuff yours. All you'll need, hacksaw, couple of bolts, that one's three eighth, that one's quarter inch, five sixteenth, whatever you've got. Or go to the hardware store and buy them, but you don't have to worry about buying the nuts. These actually are four and a half inches long. So you can use metric or you can use UNF or UNC, doesn't matter. And then a couple of files. These are little triangular files that I use actually for sharpening my saws. But a couple of triangular files, maybe a couple of screws, a piece of chalk and a few blocks of wood. And if you've got one, a cordless screwdriver is the way to go. If not, you can just a normal screwdriver and you can screw things in. All right, so when I'm talking about texture, that's sometimes you see a relief carving that's got a, a dappled background to it or some sort of textural background. Now, I have seen people using leatherwork tools to stamp it into the timber. They work absolutely fine. You can get expensive carving chisels and do the same sort of effect. But what I'm going to show you here is less than four or five dollars and you'll get a nice range of pieces you can use on your work. First things first, cut the tops. It doesn't matter if they're coach bolts or hex bolts, you cut the tops off and cut it just above the thread here. You can use a cutoff wheel and a grinder if you like. The only difference is with a hacksaw I maintain the softness of the steel. You'll find if you use a grinder it'll heat the steel up and it changes the metallic structure of the steel and it's harder to shape. Likewise, if you cut it and quench it in water, it changes the molecular structure also. But using a hacksaw takes a little bit longer, but it's much easier to work the bolt. Now, to hold something in the vise, if you've got a, a machinist vise, which I don't have on this bench, it's up in another shed, use that by all means, and they've got crossed hatched jaws that'll actually hold metal. I'm using a woodworking bench or my tail vise, H&T Gordon tail vise. Um, I haven't worked out which one I'm going to use yet. But if you just get, again, a couple of bits of scrap timber, go up to the bandsaw and just cut a 90 degree slot in it. Now what you want is that slot to be a little bit shallower so when you put a bolt in there, the bolt protrudes out of the top. For example, this cup that I've got here would not be suitable for that bolt. It's going to fall through. But for 3 8 pop it on the top, and once I clamp that, it's going to hold. Same with these little ones. I've got a shallower trench cut. So when I put that in the vise and clamp it, it's going to hold steady. So we'll put these in the vise, and I'll cut the top off just below the head and just before the thread. That's another thing I'll use is another piece of timber to go the other side of the bolt because that way I'm not going to bruise the timber jaws in my vise which I really don't want to do. Grandkids have been here again and knocked off my squirt bottle. Oh there's a bit of water that'll do. Let's rub that in the jaws. The you that don't know that trick, if you put a bit of water on your wooden jaws, it really holds timber well. So pop this in here. Swap 
whatever. Knock the thread off. And that's what we're left with, just the barrel part. Look, if you've got any um, straight round stock, use that. It's just not many of us have round steel hanging around, so the bolts are the best option. Put it back together again, place it in the vise a different way. Now, I didn't mention a flat file. If you've just got a flat file, nothing special, run of the mill. Now, with the chalk, if you rub chalk over the file lands, and what it does, it actually fills up the lands of the file. So when you're filing, there's a barrier between what you're filing and the base of the, the lands in the file itself. So when it comes to cleaning, if you give it a tap, most of it will come out. If not, you have oh, one of these things, which is called a, a, a card file, a file card, and it's a bit like a flat porcupine, very small needles bent back at an angle, and you just drag that through your file like that to clean your file, then you've got a nice new cutting surface. And if the chalk's in there, it makes cleaning a heck of a lot easier. So, a bit of chalk, back over to the bit of the bolt, and I'm just gonna file that flat. Again, if you've got a grinding wheel, you could do it on the grinding wheel, but the same thing applies to the cutoff wheel. By heating up the steel, you're changing the molecular structure and it's a little bit harder to work. Plus it gets pretty hot. Now that's got a burr all the way around, so I'll just take that off. If you look at that, we've just got a round barrel. That in itself makes quite a nice punch. But what we'll do, we'll put some features on this one. First of all, I've got a reasonably large triangular saw and I'm going to cut three tracks in the top of that bolt. Again, put it back into the little holder, place it in your vise. Then I'd start in the middle or close to the middle. See, I'm starting to cut down in there, and one to the side. What you can do, if you don't want to go all the way with the file, you can start off with a hacksaw. You can use a large hacksaw, but for little jobs, if you've got a little, I think they're called junior hacksaws. Nearly everyone's had one in their life at some stage. You can do exactly the same thing with a hacksaw blade and start off doing some cuts. And then once you've done that, do cuts 90 degrees to the ones you've already done. And then do the same. Might do two across here. And once you've got those, then it's a question of triangular file and where the, the cuts are from the saw, just file them out. And then you end up with a sort of crown effect on the top that when punched into timber will give us a very unique effect. I've just got a piece of timber here that I've routed some spaces out so you can see what it looks like. The trick with using one of these punches, it's not to put it on the timber and whack it as hard as you can. It's to hold it about a millimetre or so above the surface you're working and use your hand like a shock absorber. So it's sort of, you hit and the punch is back up in the air. So you're hitting it down 
but it's always coming back up so it's not staying down there. I'll just do this little patch here and we'll see what sort of effect we get. And so you don't get uniformity when you're punching, roll it in your hands between your fingers as you punch. And that way that'll change the um, d direction that it's actually, the design is hitting the, the uh, timber with. And that actually gives a very pleasing effect. It's um, a very mottled effect and very ununiformed. I've got a couple here that I've also made. This one is a more uniformed one to the one we just made, and it'll give, again, a different pattern. And that's a much more aggressive um, cut that I've put in that one, so we've got a more aggressive finish. There's another one that I've done I find it's much finer. Here it is. I'm sure if you can see that, but it's done with a really, really small file. Same process, only in this one I've got one, two, three. I've got four lines going one way and five going the other. Yet another one. You can get a bolt and again, if you want, do it on a grinder and grind one side flat, like that, or alternatively, if you've got an anvil or something, you can smack it with an anvil and get it nice and flat. And all I've done with this one is just gone straight across. And it's given me a really interesting straight pattern, which is good if I wanted to do a border. If you don't want to go to that trouble, here's another easy one piece of scrap timber, pop it in the vise. This actually is a pan head, metal screw, screwdriver gun. Put that in the end of a piece of timber. Screw it so it's home. And that again will give you a really nice finish for texture. Same thing with a straight Phillips head. We'll do that. Another scrap of timber. Ordinary Phillips head screw. That itself will give you a different texture. Because the Phillips head screw is flat, you get round indentations. I quite like the finish on the metal cap screw because it gives you a nice little rounded bit and then the star where the Phillips head goes. And lastly, we'll, we'll do a slotted one. So here we go there. Same thing, piece of scrap. Back at home with a screwdriver. By the way, that's called a Yankee screwdriver and I used that because I just don't trust slot blades in cordless screwdrivers. All right, where'd I put it? Oh, here it is. Same thing, pop it on your... It would have a place somewhere. I think that's my favourite of the screw ones, which is the cuphead metal screw. This is the one we just made, and that's one I use quite a bit of. But all in all, very inexpensive to make, 
and they do add that extra little piece to your work. I wouldn't uh, say use a big hammer, a little tack hammer seems to be the go. Oh, one more before we go, which is also nice. Get the small V, pop it so the thread always oh, about, what's that, half an inch from the top. Pop that in the vise. Tighten it up nice and tight. Then just bend it. Use this. Let's turn this one around. As the stamp itself. And there, you get a very nice textural effect. So that's it. Just a short one this week, but one that can really take your work to the next level because it gives a bit more interest to just dead flat and shiny. So be about it. Use your imagination. Anything you see lying around on the shed floor that you can use. Uh, even when we used to distress furniture many years ago, we used to get a lump of wood and put nails and screws and everything in and just whack all over the piece of furniture and then put um, black japanning on it, which gave it that really distressed look. To me, nowadays, I think that's just a bit clumsy and it's a bit of a cliche and it's overdone. But by using these textural backgrounds that I've shared with you today, I think it just it's a bit classier with the stamping and raising of um, the surface of whatever it is you're doing. It's tactile, it's interesting, it gives your work just that little bit of an edge and people will be guessing how you did it. Totally inexpensive, I think. With what I paid for these bolts, it's under, I think as I said in the beginning, under $5. It might have been $4 or something or other. So be about it. Experiment, play, and later on I'll show you some other finishes you can use branding irons with or uh, pyro pens, how to use butane torch to get a different effect, boot polish, different mediums, different waxes. So that's coming up a little bit later on. But all these techniques and tools that I'm sharing with you now, I'm going to be putting into larger projects down the track. So when you see me do something, you go, ah, saw that, know how to do that. So until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down on another idea and some simple tools and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more important, like us on Facebook. No, sorry, more important, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork. And if you want to know more about woodworking, join up the e-workshop at Woodworking Masterclass and there will be more videos posted there and a lot of those videos won't go to YouTube. So thanks again and I'll see you later. Bye. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. You know, when I need hardware or any bits and pieces, this is where I come. Masters Parkinson, near Browns Plains in Queensland. But with almost 60 stores nearly Australia-wide, there's bound to be one near you. So why don't you do as I do, go to Masters for your hardware. And if you see me in the Parkinson store, say g'day.